Clipping. This is a topic I have not covered on the channel yet, and I figured now would be the perfect time to do so because the good folks over at Black Salt Audio recently released a brand new clipper plugin called BSA Clipper. Now we're gonna go ahead and load this up and throw it on some drums, bass, guitar, and an overall mix. Here's some before and after audio examples and briefly talk about why you might wanna be using clipping in your mixes. All right, so let's jump right into the topic of clipping. And as you can see, I have Logic Pro up here with a few plugins. Now, real quick, we have the test oscillator, which is generating a sine wave at 1000 Hertz, which is what you're seeing right here in FabFilters Pro Q3. Then we have the uh, BSA clipper. And the way that this works is we have the sine wave before the clipper, and then that goes into the Pro Q3, which is what you're seeing here. Now, why am I doing this? Well, that's because we're gonna briefly talk about what clipping is, but more importantly, what it does to an audio signal. And what it does, I can show you. So let's go ahead and have a look at what happens when I pull the threshold of the BSA clipper down to the point where it crosses into the audio signal sine wave that is being generated here, and watch what happens in Pro-Q3. Now you see all those peaks showing up there? Those are what is called harmonic saturation, and I have an entire video on this very topic. I'll put a link up here. You can go check that out if you'd like to learn more about specifically what those are and how they're generated and what they do to an audio signal and all that. But to sum it all up, basically what's happening in the Clipper plugin here is everything above this threshold that I've just set is being chopped off and lost in the audio signal here. It's just being completely chopped off everything below that signal is coming through as it was. However, as part of the clipping process, it generates what you're seeing in Pro-Q3, these harmonic saturation. And because of these harmonics, we get a bigger, thicker, and fatter overall sound, which increases the perceived loudness of the audio signal. Even though the technically the level has been reduced because we're losing audio information that, that you can see is being clipped off here, the, in, the added harmonics will actually make it seem like it's louder. So this is a very handy mixing tool. It, without increasing the actual level of something, you can make it perceive louder and come through the mix better. And that is one great reason for using clipping in your mixes. Now, we're gonna go ahead and just dive into some audio examples, starting with the drums. All right, so clipping drums. The way I currently have it set up and the way I like to clip drums is the shells. So that's the kick, snare, and toms. And that's what you're seeing here. I have the kick sum, snare sum, and tom sum. Those are my buses for the shells. So you can see the individual settings that I have here. And just as a quick overview of BSA Clipper, there's only two settings. There is the threshold and the input level. You can increase the input level to get the audio signal to, come to, to increase it to the point where it's clipping. That's basically how it works. Now. What we're gonna do is just have a listen to this overall mix and this session, just so you can hear what it sounds like right now. Then we'll do some quick before and afters of each of the kick, snare, and toms. We'll just go ahead and listen to the session right now. There is a little example of it, and I'll just kind of come back here and show you this other section. So there you go, you get the idea of what's going on here with this session. Now, we'll go ahead, and this is a really great part here in the beginning because there's a lot of kick, uh, a lot of toms, and there's some snare as well. So I'm just gonna kinda loop a little section of this, and then I'm gonna play it back, and we will turn on and off the BSA clipper on the kick. We'll start with the kick here. Now, what you're listening for is the perceived loudness increase because of the added harmonic saturation. But more importantly, the reason I put this on here, and it's not clipping a ton, but I wanted to add a little bit of saturation to this kick to get a little bit more snap on the kick. So listen for that as well. So there you go, that was pretty obvious. Uh, even though as you can see on the, on the meter here, and I'll play this back again, you can see, I mean, we're maybe getting, I don't know, maybe two dB-ish of, of kind of clipping happening here. So it's not a ton, 
But that additional saturation happening, especially on the top end where that, that beater snap is, is really helping this kick cut through this mix. Now moving on to the snare, we'll do the same thing. We'll solo the snare and do a quick before and after. And now what I want to point out here is I'm clipping quite a bit of the snare. It's probably greater than 10 dB. And the reason for that is because this is a very pokey snare. Hey, 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 quit poking me. There's a lot of transient information and I wanted to get rid of that. So I had a more well-rounded sound of the snare. It wasn't so pokey. It wasn't causing my mix bus to really pump a lot. And the added saturation, especially with the stick attack, really increases the overall perceived loudness of this snare and helps it cut through this mix. So here we go. That one is a huge difference, as I said. And you can see on the meter here, there was a lot of gain reduction happening here, or clipping, I should say. Uh, so we're losing a lot of that pokey transient part of the snare drum, keeping a nice fat sounding snare without it causing my, my mix bus to pump a lot because of all that transient information. So that is how I'm utilizing on the snare. And the toms I'm using, not nearly as much. It, this is kind of like the kick. It's just to add a little bit of saturation, get a little bit more stick attack in the toms. So let's have a listen. Yeah, again, not like a massive difference, but you can clearly hear the difference there, especially in the top end with, with the stick attack. So that is how I like to utilize clipping on my drums. All right, next up is the bass, and I like to use clipping on my bass as a finishing mix tool. So I have this on my bass bus, and in fact, is the very last plugin on my bass bus. And again, that is a because I like to use it as a finishing tool. And that what I mean by that is, I like to use it to clip off any strong transient information that may be trying to poke through from the bass. I also like it to add some additional harmonic saturation to the bass so that it increases the perceived loudness and adds some additional character to the bass, especially in the top end, and just helps it cut through the mix overall better. It makes a nice, fat, thick sounding bass tone. So let's have a listen before and after. So there you go. You get a little bit more saturation in there. It just makes it sound thicker, fatter, increases the perceived loudness. It is a great way to finish your bass. Now, another thing I want to point out is you don't necessarily have to use this as like a finishing tool on your bass bus like I'm doing. Another great way to use this would be before a bass preamp to add a, a unique character to your bass DI before it hits the preamp. The preamp I'm using here is Mammoth by Aurora DSP. I love this. It adds a lot of great saturation, but a unique way to change up the character of the sound is by clipping your DI before it hits the preamp. And in fact, that's exactly what we're about to look at with the guitar. All right, so clipping a guitar. A lot of you, your mind or your head might just be exploding right now because you're thinking, wait, 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 Jeremy, everything I've ever learned or ever been taught is you don't clip a guitar, right? Like when you're trying to dial in the DI signal in your audio interface. You don't want clipping, right? Right? Well, that's not always the case, my friend. When you're dialing in tones, you do whatever needs to be done to create the unique characteristics that you're looking for. And if that means clipping the hell out of your DI, clip the hell out of your DI, because that is a great way to create some unique sounds, especially for guitar tones, and I'm about to demonstrate that right now. But what I want to do first is just show you the signal chain we're working with right now, and then we'll switch it over to clipping the DI and you'll, you'll hear the difference in how it can create a unique sound to your guitar tone. So this is kind of your typical setup, especially if you've seen my channel. I have some pre-EQ on my DI, that's what's happening there. 
I have the Nimbrini Audio 808. This is just an, an 808 overdrive pedal emu uh, emulation. You can see the settings there. Then we're going into the brand new Bogren Digital Amp Knob Rev C plugin, which this is a fantastic sounding plugin if you haven't heard it yet. Uh, you're about to, but also there's free trial on this. You'll find a link to it down in the description below. Go download that free trial and check that out. Fantastic sounding guitar amp sim. And then we have the Lindell Audio, which is kind of an API channel strip. Uh, and this is just some post EQ. All right, so that is the guitar signal chain. And let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like right now. Really damn good. Like I said, that Bogren Digital Amp Sim is incredible. Uh, so you can see, you can hear that sounds really, really good. Nice tight guitar tone. Now, what it, would it sound like if we add BSA Clipper into the mix here? So let's get rid of the 808, which we know is creating a nice tight tone. It's kind of dialing back some of the low end, adding in a touch of saturation, boosting the level up a little bit to hit the amp with a little bit louder, uh, stronger signal. And that really kind of tightens up the tone. But let's try to get a unique characteristic out of this by clipping the DI signal. And as you'll see here, I'm just gonna take this input level on each of these guitar tracks, guitar track one and two, and just turn the input all the way up. I'm keeping the level at zero dB, but just increasing the level all the way just to clip the hell out of them. So let's go ahead and hear what these guitar tones sound like now. So you can hear how that clipping has just created a completely new and unique sound to this versus the 808. So I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna play this back and we'll just quickly flip back and forth here so you can hear the difference. So that is a very, very great way to create some unique custom guitar tones. And if you have a section of a song you're working on where you're looking at how to find a way to create a very, very thick guitar tone that really cuts through a mix, just sounds super chunky, try clipping the hell out of your DI signal before it hits your amp sim. All right, and so the last example we are gonna look at as a great way to utilize clipping is on your overall mix, and in fact, Everything you've heard so far, even the full mix or full session ex audio example I played at the beginning was running through this. And as you can see, it's right here, BSA Clipper on my stereo output. So it is affecting everything, my entire mix, the overall mix is going through this. And now why would you want to do this? Well, it's because for a couple reasons. One, to again, control transient information to clip off any strong peaks, but more importantly, to increase the overall level of your mix to get it up to a competitive loudness and to add harmonic saturation, which of course increases perceived loudness, as I mentioned many times, and creates a bigger and thicker sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and I will toggle this on and off and you will hear the massive, massive loudness difference here. And also listen to kind of how it changes up the characteristic. And what I'll do is I'll actually, I'll toggle it on and off and then I'll pull the audio volume all the way down and then bring it back up and you can kind of hear what happens. So you can see right there, we're not clipping everything. There's a, the snare drum is actually peeking through this mix, even with all the clipping I have going on, 
there are still some strong peaks coming through from the snare drum that are being clipped right now. But as I continue to bring this up, it'll basically start clipping everything to where everything is kind of evened out. And so there you go. That is another great way to utilize clipping in your mixes. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video on clipping and how to utilize it in your mixes. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, do me a few things here. For one, click that like button down below. Consider just subscribing to my channel. That button is right down below as well. And hit that thank you button. That is brand new, a brand new feature to YouTube and my channel. And it is a way that you can directly support me and the channel and everything I'm doing here. So click all of those. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this. If you have any questions about anything, I'd love to help answer those as well. Find all the additional downloads and information and ways you can support the channel in the description below. And with that, I wanna thank you for watching and thank you for your support.